we're going to take a quick look at the Bark River Manitou. This one is in desert ironwood burl and it has the bloody basin spacers. The steel is CPM crew wear, which if you're not familiar with it, it's almost as tough as CPM 3V, um, but it's got significantly more wear resistance. It's almost as wear resistant as uh, CPM M4, but a whole lot tougher. This knife is probably one of the prettiest knives I've got. It's a real high performance um, cutting blade for sure. It's got very thin geometry on it for a Bark River. I mean it's not thin but compared to say a Bravo um, or a heavier duty knife it's significantly thinner behind the edge. This is a Bravo 1 and you can see side by side they're fairly similar in size but the Manitou is significantly thinner stock I think it's 156 and then it's thinned down a bit a little bit lighter I think it's about 6.8 ounces compared to a gunny A little bit bigger than a gunny. Handle wise, pretty much the same. Blades a little bit longer and wider. It's also a little bit thinner. I think it starts off the same stock thickness or thereabouts. The swedge itself makes it look thinner than it probably is too. You can see at the Ricasso that it's fairly thick. Yeah. Absolutely a beautiful little knife. I'm really happy with it. The sheath itself is quite nice. I'll do another video here or maybe put it with this video as well. Um, treating the leather on this. I treat it with Hubbard shoe grease. It darkens it up quite nicely and it also protects it. I'd highly recommend anybody that's interested in one of these to jump on what's left. There's not that many of them. Of course crazy sharp like every Bark River. Excellent light to medium duty knife. It's got quite a thin edge on it, so I mean, you're not going to want a horse on it like you would and could with a Bravo. But for any normal things, you'd have no problems. I mean, CPM crew wears, I mean, it's extremely tough. I've got no, no issues with its toughness. I've accidentally stabbed the tip of uh, my Bravo 1.25 LT that's in crew wear into the it's the firewall um, fender mount, this quarter inch steel on a truck trying to cut a zap strap off and it barely rolled the edge on the tip. A few minutes on the strop and it was back to normal pretty much. So, I mean, typical stainless steels, I mean, there's no way you could have done that. Um, no problems using it for hunting, obviously. I mean, I think that's probably what it would excel at, hunting, fishing great fishing knife like for trout and a little big for trout maybe but all around good camp knife you can do food processing with it it's thin enough that you can slice vegetables and whatnot without too much issues I mean compared to the Bravo one I mean they're still cut like a hot damn but I mean they're you can definitely feel it when you're trying to cut through a carrot or something or a potato or an onion it really wants to push that food away instead of slicing through it this thing's gonna slice like crazy like a laser okay so we're gonna look at treating this sheath 
and I use Hubbard shoe grease. So all I do when I'm doing this, is I'll take the sheath, put some gloves on, get a big gob of it, and I just work it in. stuff. I don't put as much on the belt loop just because I don't want to get have it soften up too much. I put just enough to get everything nice and even. I also don't put too much on the retention strap. Just a little bit. Oh, I've got a decent amount on there. Now, I'll take the hair dryer. careful with is not putting too much heat that the glue starts to loosen up. As you can see it's not quite even so I'll have to put some more on there just to even it out. I mean you don't have to but I like to make it look a little more even and uniform. Just enough to get some of those real dark spots out of there. Any of the dark spots that may be still visible, they'll blend in as the sheath earns a bit of a patina over time. If you heat it up a lot, it'll really soak the stuff up. And the one thing I like about the Hubbard shoe grease compared to other stuff that I've used is that it darkens the leather and you don't have to put a whole lot to get it to darken. So by not needing a whole lot of leather protectant on there to get the color that you want, you don't have to worry about it softening the leather which I don't think is a good idea, especially on pouch style sheaths and whatnot that you need 
that leather to be stiff to retain your knife. Now, oh, I think that looks pretty good. There's a little bit of unevenness there, but it will lighten up a bit. I can put more heat on it. I think that's pretty good. I think that looks pretty sharp, just the way it is. Get rid of this pink hair dryer. <laughs> what the wife doesn't know won't hurt her, as they say. Until she gets mad because the hair dryer smells like boot grease. I don't have hair, so I don't need a hair dryer for anything else. Definitely one of the prettiest knives that Bark River makes. It's hard to pick one because they make such nice knives. I like these contemporary, whatever you call them, historic pattern knives. The old marbles stuff. I have a real soft spot for them.